You can connect the world of Hard Mage to any other medieval fantasy world out there. But one thing that makes this world different is the same technology developed in the world. Before we talk about the world itself, we have to understand the foundations first. The solar system that holds the world of Hard Mage is a 11 planet system. Each of the planets and the sun correlate to one of the 12 March Guardians of the world. Each of these guardians watch over the world and protect magic as a whole. The people in the world of Hard Mage only know that there are a total of 8 planets. Hard Mage is the fourth planet from the sun. There are a total of 5 land masses in the world, but only 3 of them are huge enough to be talked about. The grand land masses on the right is split into 3 main sections, Argri, the Orklands, and Manu Dusri. The sword land mass is in the middle of the map. It is split into three main sections, Mount Golan, West Sistan, and the Halfling Nations. The Fey land mass is on the left. It is split into two main sections, Fabian and Northland. The races that develop the same technology across the world, the dwarves, gnomes, and halflings are simply known as the folk. Their homeland, and industry is cursed. The curse of the land brings up undead. These undead are harder to kill than the normal undead that necromancers make. As a result, only one foot of the land is used and protected by the folk. The remaining two thirds of Manu Destry now belong to the undead, and calls forth adventurers to the land. Some say that the curse is caused by their use of their technology. The folk have become more reliant on their technology instead of magic, letting their magic heal and become stronger, stronger in reaction, becoming the cause of the stronger undead. Others say that the guardians of magic curse the land to that the other civilizations across the world become more industrialized and powerful, saying that they would have conquered the world if the land wasn't cursed. On the grand landmass, but north of many industries, is a place called Argri. Argri is split between the east and the west of the Blood River. A simplification of the land is the religions, ideals, and traditions of the land as presented. The east has many gods, while the west only has one. The East believes that all people should have a higher status and learn magic, while the West believes that the work of the common man is the main factor of their status. Though they are totally different lands, they have been at war with each other for at least 10 generations, maybe more. The lands of Argri have many differences, but one thing that is similar to their species, both lands are mostly covered with humans. Compared to other lands of the world, Argri has the most humans living on its soils. On the Grand Land Mass and in between Argri and Manu Destry is a place known as the Orklands. We don't know a lot about the Orklands, but we do know, however, is that the Orklands are covered in monstrous races across the whole land. All of these races at least own one territory, but the amount is dependent on if they can keep it from the Orcs. Like what the name says, most of the Orklands is owned by the Orcs. If the races can't keep their territory, all those people just became special employees to the Orcs. West of the Grand Landmass and past the Warranty Sea is the Sword Landmass. The Sword Landmass is split between three different parts, Mount Gaten, West Distan, and the Halflands. Ma Mount Gaten is a land full of mountains and cold tundras. Mount Gaten is home to the Goliath and a special type of plant named the Starflower. The Halflands is split between three different areas, Dorkol, Haladin, and Behedin. These lands are mostly covered by the Halfling race. Though many dwarves and refugees from my new are coming here to live a better life free from the land's curse. West Destin is a land full of different nations that are often at each other's throats every other century. Recently, the nation of Arsaisa had its queen murdered and is in a hostile takeover. Between the Sword Landmass and the Grand Landmass is a grand sea named after the island nation in the middle of that very sea. The Warrandy Sea is the sea between the two landmasses. In the middle of the Warrandy Sea is an island nation named the Isles of Warrandy. The Isles of Warrandy are full of spellcasters, spices, trade, and high storms. It is said that the storms themselves repair the weave of magic but at a deadly cost. The storms are powerful and cause massive amount of damage to the Isles. Luckily, they only form between every 5 to 10 years. Recently, a high storm has formed over the Isles and stayed there. This storm is named Storm Fianna, the Forever Storm. Storm Fianna is named the Forever Storm since it appeared about 12 years ago and has not moved or disappeared since. The nobility of the Isles are spellcasters, basically making a meritocracy. Most of the population of the Isles are sailors. Many of the fa families live on the Isles, making them able to visit their families while still working. Since many of them are sailors, it is a good guess that some of them are a part of the Isles Navy. The Navy of the Isles are the trading fleets throughout the Warrandy Sea. 
On the opposite side of the world, there is a landmass full of fey creatures. There are two main sides to the land, each split by the fey mountains. The north of the mountains is the fey that decide to not follow their gods' rules, but their belief that they are better. They can choose their future, not their gods. The fey from the south, meanwhile, live a life following their gods. They help nature, and nature helps them. Even their grand cities follow this ideal. Even the south is covered in trees, showing that they are caring for the land. This land mess is named after the fey that covered the land, for the land is named Fabin. South of Fabin is the land of the undead. These undead have formed societies all across the land. Liches battle for the land itself and rule with an iron fist. The land itself has no trees, but rather stones and grasses, so all buildings have been built out of rocks and a green paste made out of the grass. There are some sentient living creatures on the land. They are few and only live in hunter-gatherer type groups. Some undead societies have captured some of these sentient creatures and raised them up like livestock. Sometimes when a sentient creature shows prowess over magic, they are transported to a ruler, often a lich, and raised to be a wizard. They often transform themselves into liches later. Sailors call this land Deet, short for death. Many sailors created stories and told tales explaining why they don't go there. On the south side of the planet is a landmass covered in giants and a race that looks like dragons. This landmass is Gal Kulin, and not many people have been to this land, other than the natives. Thanks to this fact, many mysteries are still a part of the area's lore. A few people who have been here saying the land is marketed by a white mist. The forest look unto your soul, and if you see a giant, run until you can't no more. The history of the world is a bit complex, but it can be easily be split between five different eras and an intermediate period in between each era. Each intermediate period is known as a calamity, a period of time when the whole world has to face off against one or multiple enemies that brings a new age to the world. Everything else is just layered on these eras and calamities, forming a complex history throughout the world. The first era is known as the Founding Era. This is the era when the first sentient creatures arose in the world. Out of the many, many races in the world today, only four have started the world. These races are the Goliaths, humans, elves, and halflings. All these races knew the basic techniques of the Stone Age tools and buildings at the start. Some of them even advanced to the Bronze Age before the first era calamity came into effect. All of the languages of the world came from four races that started this era. The second era is known as the Age of Heroes. Many of our modern day myths of heroes came from this age. It is believed that these heroes were real people at some point that got changed to be in myth. Many of these heroes of this era brought light into the world, but others brought darkness. One of these stark heroes doesn't compare to the others. A mage who is believed to be the first necromancer created the orcs and other monstrosity monstrous races in the Orklands. The creation of the monstrous races brought forth the second era calamity. The third era of the world changed people's view of magic. Once people were willing to learn, but now since the calamity of the second era, people's view have changed. Arcane magic almost ceased to a complete and utter stop. Divine magic, on the other hand, was still used, even though the locals still feared it. The possibility of a mage growing powerful and changing a region or corrupting themselves scared everyone. It is only when the Third Era Calamity happened is when people's view of magic started to change. Magic could help them survive. It could help them live. The Fourth Era is known as the Knowledge Era. People all across the world start to gather information about everything. And when people start to gather information, science is about to be discovered. Magic got viewed in the same way. A new profession arose in this age, one known as the Mageologist. One area of the world, Manudestry, brought forth technology the world hasn't seen yet. They call this technology flamed water, but we would know this technology as steam-powered technology. The fifth era uh, is the era that the world is in now. Some are trying to name this era the Industrial Era, the Era of Wonders, and many, many more. It is still too early to name this era since we are only in 200 years of history compared to the other eras with thousands of years of history. Some say that we are not in the fifth era, but rather we are in the fourth era calamity. Many arguments have been made about this. One of them supporting this is that we are in the fifth era because of the warranty trade war that started this era. Others say it didn't happen to the whole world. Even though the world of hard mages is one eighth larger than earth, it is still troubled by many problems. 
The man who does and curse is only getting stronger with each day, and a non-focused person is conquering the nation. The orcs and the monstrous races still linger from the time they were created and the nation of Arsaza had their queen recently murdered. Hey, since you watched the complete very end of this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. And I hope you have a nice, excellent day or wonderful night whenever you are watching this video. Good night.